Hello again and welcome back. In this video we'll try to finish with the OCaml hash tables. We'll try to learn a bit more about uh, OCaml hash tables and try to use the iterate and map functions from there. Going straight away to our um, <coughs> hash, hash table module uh, uh, in the um, OCaml module index from the website as you've been using before. Uh, we've seen the create function, we've seen the, the, clear, the clear function, it just empties the hash table, so you just say hash table dot clear and then you provide the hash table name as we did before. Copy, reset, self-exploratory, add, find, we've seen all these, memory move, replace. This time we're going to use iterate and fold functions, the ones we learned uh, when we learned uh, OCaml lists. The concept is very very similar, it's exactly the same thing. Oh, by the way, <coughs> If you remember when I explained, uh, and there, there's the uh, length function over there. If you remember when I explained how OCaml hash uh, ha hash tables work and the, the way they um, do sort of indexing and things like that, just check the beginning of the last video, just to show you something. OCaml has a function called hash, and another one seed hash. I'm sorry, seeded hash. Now the hash function, what, what it does is it generates an index, it says here, associates a non-negative non -negative integer to any value of any type. Yeah, so basically this is the function that's used to generate the index. We give it any value of any type and that's our key. Uh, the key can be integer, string, float, boolean, it can be a struct, it can be any type that we define if you remember. Uh, for example, pre in one of our previous videos we, um, we created types and we used them for example for um, I can't remember what we used them for uh, but we use for example I think name and address or something like that but anyway you can use any type if you want even uh, if you define your type which has several fields or um, and then you can use them in your in your hash table because we mentioned before that hash tables are polymorphic if you remember so this function we pass it anything and it generates a hash so let me copy and paste that and going straight to my terminal and to our top loop if you look here and we say hash table dot hash if we pass it a string for example it generates an integer value if we pass it another string another integer value if we pass it an integer generates an integer value. If we pass it sort of like a type, maybe for example we can say um, i equals 5 and f equals 4.5 I don't know whether this will work. Yes, because it doesn't know the type, that's why. So I need just to basically um, declare the type first if you remember and then uh, use it there and it should be fine. Anyway, that's how the hash function works and that's how the index gets generated. Now let's try to create the hash table we used before. If you remember when we used um, when we used letters and cities and things like that. So we have London, Leeds. I'll keep just spending time on this. Remember that anything you can you do here, you can do it in your source code when you put your code in a so OCaml source file, i.e. .ml file and you can compile it easily. Check uh, my OCaml tutorial series if you don't know how to do that. Now, just to demonstrate, let's have a look at the um, length function hash, table.length and then we give it my hash and our table has six elements. Now our hash table has six elements. Now going back to the hash table module if we look at the iterate function very similar to the one we learned in OCaml list as we said before hash table dot iterate f and table so function and a table it applies the function f to all bindings in the table tbl receives key uh, as first element and associated value as the second element each binding is presented exactly once to f so basically, if you look here, this is the syntax. So we have a hash table, the iterate function, we pass it a function and 
a hash table the function this is an anonymous function it receives the key value pairs it receives two arguments the first one is the key the second one is the value and we can do whatever we want with uh, the key or the value and because there are strings in our case in this hash table here the one we've just created we can for example print them out printf dot printf this is formatting printing formatted printing I'm sorry no it's a string so we say we just will just print out all the key pairs and I say key and value so if I copy and paste that I'm sure by now you should be very familiar with anonymous functions and by the way you can declare your own function to use it instead and now we pay the pa we print out the pairs and as you can see um, these guys because they have this the the same key value um, if you see here L L L L they are printed the opposite way yes they are printed the opposite way remember we said uh, this is apparently a stack when we spoke about conflicts and clashing and this idea of chaining in the last video and then C for Cairo and T for Tripoli very similar it's exactly the same concept as the iterate function in the list module the fault function however if you look at the way it works hash table dot fault we have a function we have a table and we have an initial value it, it works as th the same concept so it can by the way fault uh, iterate doesn't generate anything it just applies the function it returns unit whereas fault it does return a value yes so it does some computation and returns a value so it computes um, f of k1 d1 in it in it is an initial value that we give and then the result of that gets passed to the second sort of uh, iteration of, of of the function fold which is the applied to the next element of the data structure or the hash table that we have so k1 d1 are key value of the first ones and then that the result of that will be passed to k2 d2 when we apply if on that let's have an example and see how that works the same idea as we used in uh, the list module so hash table dot fold and we pass it maybe an anonymous function again the first element is the key the second element is the value and the third element is the initial value value that we can provide and it tells us here that how how it is, how it actually applies that the order in which the bindings are passed to f is unspecified um, <coughs> and there it tells us okay where k1 k1 until kn are the keys of the bindings in table d1 dn are the associated values each binding is passed exactly once so basically what we have is in the f function we need to have three elements um, or three parameters rather the first one is um, the key the second one is the value and the third one is the initial value as we can see here going back to my code so I can see here that we have function of key value and init and then what I'm trying to do here because um, the key and value in my table now in my hash table now are both strings so I can create a list and consider these as elements of, I'm sorry, of, the, of the same list and this is exactly what I'm doing here what I'm doing is I'm applying I'm saying key added to value added to init so basically init now I'm assuming init the initial value is an empty list and I'm attaching these two elements to that list and then when the function iterates on the next key value pairs the first ones will be in the list already and th th that list will be passed as the third element to the next key value pairs and so on and so forth until the process uh, finishes and this will produce a new list because the result of this is actually a list again because the initial value is an empty list so if you notice the order here is um, sorry the order here is that we pass the function table and then initial value and this is what we have here is the anonymous function the hash table and the initial value again copy and paste that and we should have a list of all these elements L London L Leeds L Liverpool L Libya T Tripoli C Cairo again going back to the top loop paste that and the result will be a list as you can see so very good thank you very much for watching I hope you're getting the idea now of the or how simple 
data structures are in OCaml, how it makes things very very makes things very very easy. If you are using uh, data structures, if you use them heavily in your programs, then OCaml is your friend. Definitely, I highly recommend it. Uh, by now, you should be able to know where to find me. If you have any questions, then uh, please contact me. By the way, I learned OCaml. I'm not a very very big expert. I learned it when I was working with a guy with a scientific researcher that rather called Volker Sorg so if I google his name he is at the uh, University of Birmingham he's a very nice guy a very good scientist Sorg not Volk Sorg he was my PhD supervisor that wh that's what he looks like and that's his personal web page that's where I learned or come uh, pictures that's a picture yes so I learned OCaml with Volker, a very nice guy, a very very excellent programmer. He's the type of people where you just hear some keyboard stroke da -da 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 -da, and then something is there and it's working. Amazing. Okay, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.